What's up guys, it's Mark from Silenced Tech. Today we're checking out an epic product from MSI, the Z370 Godlike Gaming Motherboard. We're going to see also how well it can overclock Intel's newest 8700K. It's literally 5 GHz or bust. I couldn't possibly imagine anyone picking up this board with any other CPU since the Godlike costs so much. Priced at $494 in the US and a whopping £517 in the UK, this has to be the most expensive mainstream motherboard ever made. First of all, let's take a look at what you get inside the box for all your hard earned money. And no, it doesn't come with its own GPU inside. What it does come with is two red braided SATA cables and another eight black standard SATA cables. The IO shield comes with different magnetic covers, which is a real nice touch, although they are a little bit too busy for my tastes. You get the usual driver's discs and manuals, and there's also several for Mr. Cables that you can use used to monitor temps in and around your case. Also for accessories you get an audio jack converter, a nice MSI case badge, a rather basic considering the price of this motherboard, high bandwidth SLI bridge and there's also a USB expander cable, SATA labels, an M.2 expander which I'll get into a little bit more later, you get LED extension cables and lastly an RGB strip which is again a nice touch to have in the box and that connects directly to your motherboard. Taking a glance at the motherboard, powered off, the design is neutral, so it'll fit in with any PC build, no matter what colour you want to use. It's just a shame they couldn't resist making the game boost dial red. Either way, its stealth design will appeal to a lot more people, especially when you factor in all of the RGB LED capabilities, which I will demonstrate a little later in the video. Delving into the godlike Z370's features, there's a massive 10 fan headers around the board. Each one is very well placed. There's a CPU and pump header at the top. There's two fan headers situated just above the first PCIe slot, two next to the 24 pin and another two at the bottom of the motherboard. Extreme overclockers and novices alike will be happy to know there's a whole host of tools to aid them. Individual LED postcode displays, plus a power reset and game boost dial, all situated at the top right of the motherboard. With all that paired with a dual BIOS switch, clear CMOS button and an extra CPU and PCIe power connectors, the Z370 Godlike has everything covered, including two overclocking jumpers for BIOS entry and reset BIOS settings. The Godlike's PCIe slots feature steel armour, which will definitely help with GPU sag. I currently have a pair of extremely long MSI GTX 1080 Ti trios installed, and compared to my previous motherboard, the sag has been greatly reduced. The top PCIe slot is also one slot higher than most motherboards as well, meaning that there's an extra slot gap between two cards, and since most 1080 Ti's take up so much room, the extra gap or width is highly appreciated. Its layout works in multiple configurations and it's rather limited due to the 8700K only having so few PCIe Express lanes. With one card installed in the top slot you get times 16 times 0 times 0 and with two cards installed like I have in the top and third slot you get times 8 times 0 and times 8. Or with three cards installed you get times 8 times 4 and times 4. Four. There's support for up to two-way SLI or four-way crossfire. Unfortunately, the last PCIe slot shares bandwidth with other devices, such as one of the M.2 slots. For storage, there's six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, a U.2 port, and multiple times 4 PCIe 3.0 M.2 slots. Each one has a rather nice M.2 heat shield. You're also able to add another two via a times 16 PCIe card. I'm not too sure who would need that many M.2 drives. 
Several drives on the board also conflict with each other, again due to a limitation in PCIe Express lanes provided by the CPU, so please double check before purchasing multiple storage drives. Checking out the integrated USB connections, the godlike Z370 has one USB 3.1 Type-C and Type-A. There's four USB 2.0 ports, and taking a look at the rear I.O., there's a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, six USB 3.0 ports, a USB 3.1 Type-A, and a USB 3.1 Type-C. Further along there's multiple 1 gigabit LAN ports and each one can dish out 100 megabytes per second to a specific task like gaming. There's also of course a clear CMOS button, there's two Wi-Fi antennas, a 6.3mm headphone jack connected to a high-end DAC and lastly 7.1 audio outputs with an SPDIF out. Before we move on to the RGB lighting, let's take a look at how well the Z370 Godlike overclocks Intel's newest 6-core CPU, the 8700K. Using MSI's Click BIOS, it took a matter of minutes to push the 8700K to its limit. By simply dialing in a dirty 5 GHz overclock at 1.3 volts, it brought the temperatures up to 84C in IDA64. Returning to the BIOS and dialing down the voltage to 1.275 volts, the 8700K never rose above 80C ever. I'm going to be using this build full time soon for editing and streaming, so as you can imagine I was extremely happy with the results. As far as the motherboard was concerned I had a slight issue, the CPU fan header was running in smart fan mode, which resulted in not delivering enough power to my H100i pump or my CPU cooler. Simply turning it off fixed the issue and apart from that the motherboard has been running like a dream. I've had problems in the past with motherboards but so far the Z370 godlike has worked very well as you'd expect for the price. Moving on to some benchmarks, Intel's newest Coffee Lake processor performed extremely well in any benchmark I threw at it. The 8700K scored an impressive 1574 on Cinebench beating out the 8600K and 7700K by a big margin. On 3D Mark Firestrike I had the biggest score ever for the entire system hitting 19,399 and I got a score of 20,946, resulting in a score clearly better than 99% of all results, which is impressive stuff. Testing the CPU on CPU-Z, the 8700K scored 487 on a single core and 3702 on a multi-threaded test. Jumping into render times, it beat out my 6850K by a good margin. Needless to say, I know what CPU I will be using for video editing from now on. Jumping into some games, at 1920 by 1080 resolution, the 8700K squeezed out a nice amount of frames over the 7700K and 8600K. In Battlegrounds, I got an extra 4 FPS, hitting 118. Battlefield 1, I got an extra 9 FPS, and in GTA 5, I managed an extra 7 FPS over the 7700K. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the RGB lighting effects. They are really good on this motherboard, but using MSI's Mystic Light app was a real pain. It's just a little too slow to respond, and the lighting options when syncing other components together is limited. You can either choose, from what I can tell, a little bit of a light show which flashes everything back and forth, or you can choose static or breathing. Apart from that, I couldn't see any more. Once I finally got into the motherboard lighting options, which is separate from syncing everything else together, I did notice that it is absolutely insane the customization levels on this motherboard, and it's great to see. Not only can you choose various effects from a big drop down list, each area of the motherboard can also have its own different effect. For example, you can also turn them off, so I don't personally like the unlimited writing on the motherboard. 
and that's no problem I can just turn it off using the software. One issue I do have with this motherboard is it seems the dim slots have red LEDs illuminated around them and that can't be turned off. But yet again there is another MSI product where it has RGB lighting mixed in with red and it's certainly not a deal breaker but it seems so silly how adamant MSI are to keep red LEDs on all of their products when they're trying to push mystic lights and of course all the RGB lighting effects. Anyway guys, rounding off as a summary, the Z370 godlike gaming motherboard appeals to a very particular set of people, enthusiasts of PC builders, and it's not normal to see such a high-end product like the godlike so soon in the life cycle of a platform. Right now MSI are the only manufacturers to release something so crazy so soon. The motherboard feels like it belongs to the X299 platform and it's only when you take a closer look at its features does its limitations become apparent and it's hard for me to grade this motherboard sure it's the ultimate z370 motherboard out right now but do coffee lake owners need all of these features surely x299 would be a more appealing platform Nevertheless, if money is no object, the Z370 Godlike provides some great options, especially when it's paired with 8700K. Saying that, I would be seriously worried if you bought this motherboard and didn't pair it with an 8700K. My overall award is going to be gold. I hope you've enjoyed the review, guys. My name's Mark from Silence Tech. Goodbye.